Now, if you're thinking about going on an Alaskan cruise adventure, I recently went, had an amazing time, but there are six things that I would absolutely make sure that you pay attention to, make sure that you plan in advance, make sure that you are in some way thinking about for your Alaskan cruise adventure. We're going to go over those six right now. Number one, and it's an extremely common question, dressing in Alaska. I'm glad I looked this up and asked friends, make sure you dress in layers. I've said it multiple times at this point, you absolutely need to dress in layers. Why? It's because when you go from one destination to another, it might be really, really cold where you're starting and really warm where you, you end up, right? So being able to dress in layers is really important, being able to take them off and put them back on as needed. In addition, think about how you're going to carry around the extra layers when you're not wearing them. So for me, I realized that I could like put an extra, like one of my under, you know, longer shirts into the sleeve of my coat, right? So I could like just take care of the coat around with everything basically in the coat. So think about that in advance of your cruise, especially when you're out and about on these excursions, the temperature is going to vary a lot. In addition, don't forget the rain equipment, right? Make sure you are ready for the rain at all times because more than likely it's going to happen at least once on your cruise. Number two on my list of things that you definitely don't want to miss on an Alaskan cruise, make sure you book those excursions. Don't miss them. They're absolutely worth it. Some of them are more expensive. It's true and you can book them through the ship or not through the ship. You know, you have different choices. I've gone over that in a different video. However, you're going to want to book those excursions, whether it be for whale watching or the Alaskan lumberjack show. There's a lot of different things to experience in Alaska, but when you take the excursion, it takes you that extra step. Many of the things I did were on excursions. Some I did self-guided tours, loved them both, really did. And I would recommend it, of course, but I think more than likely I would say, hey, head to those excursions first, see what you can find and book them early because they do fill up, especially for Alaska. Number three, make sure you pay close attention to those port times because I paid attention to the itinerary, which I'm gonna get back to in a minute, but the port times is something that I didn't really look at in advance of the cruise, right? So, and not all cruise lines are gonna tell you exactly when you're gonna be leaving each port, but sometimes you can look at the past, like, okay, what's the record for this ship? at these, you know, different days and different ports. Our ship left, I think it was Kitchikan, at like 11 in the morning, right? 11.30, something like that. And it was a long, long sail from Kitchikan all the way to British Columbia. So that was something that really kind of took me off guard. And we didn't have much time in British Columbia either. So it cut two ports pretty short. Glad we went, glad we experienced it. But looking back, I would want to do that differently where I had most of the day, like until at least two or three, come on, something, most of the day to experience the port and then get on the ship to go to the next, next destination. Is it just how they planned it? Yes, but it's something to kind of pay attention to. And next time for me personally, I'm really going to be paying attention to that, figuring out where it goes and how long it's usually at each port. Number four on my list, make sure you try some food off of the ship. Now, this is not a suggestion that I take lightly, right? I think that trying the food on board is really great. I'm really glad I did. I missed the opportunity to try food at the port. It's true there were long lines, $77 per pound crab, but apparently it is one absolutely not to miss. We had some delicious fish and seafood on board the Holland America Eurodam. However, I feel like we missed that opportunity. So don't miss it if you're going to Alaska. Try the food at the port or somewhere around the port. They're gonna have some amazing food. Alaska is well known for this. So it's something to really be paying attention to. Number five, stateroom choice. Now this is something that I've been talking about a little bit. The veranda is something that I love. I've always loved having a veranda. It's great to go out there, get some pictures. I loved it, I, didn't, I enjoyed it. And if it's available to me, I would do that again, 100%. Is it required for Alaska? It's a really good question because this is one that I, I debated with for a long time. Do I really feel like I needed a veranda? In some ways, it's great having it. Did I need it? No. The reason why is because, especially on the smaller ship, I can't speak to the larger ships going to Alaska, right? But the smaller ship going to Alaska, I almost felt like if we had an ocean view, it would do just the same thing. I wouldn't do inside for Alaska, no way. But if you had an ocean view, just so you have a window out there to cut the costs, I would recommend it because if you want to run out there and get some pictures, you can easily do it on one of the higher decks. No problem. Now, what again, I, I want to be very clear about this. I would get a veranda again. Why? Why is that? I enjoy going out there. I enjoy taking pictures. I did not utilize it that much. I just want to kind of make sure that you have all the information you need. 
Is it worth it? I felt like it was. And if I had the opportunity again, I would go veranda. But if there's like no verandas left available and I really want to go on this cruise, would I feel like it's just such a waste of a cruise to go on for the ocean view with the window outside instead of veranda? No, I wouldn't. I would be ready to go, ready to save some money and use some of that money on the excursions. That's me personally. Number six on our list, make sure that you know the itinerary of the cruise. Now, this is really important because when we were thinking about this cruise, we thought about it for a long time, thought about which ship I wanted to go on, which one I really wanted to try a new line. It was kind of between Princess and Holland, to be honest with you, just because we wanted to try a new line so badly. And I'm glad we chose Holland because we had a chance to try a new line. That's true. But we also saw that it went to Glacier Bay. I've mentioned this multiple times. Apparently, the park rangers told us only two ships are allowed at Glacier Bay every single day. It's my understanding, just because of the requirements of the national park, something like that. But it really enhanced the trip in a whole new way because I've spoken to friends who went to Alaska, had a great time, magical time, but they didn't go to Glacier Bay. I mean, I would love to see Skagway. I want to go and I'm looking forward to it. However, Glacier Bay was an absolute blast. Glad we went, glad we saw it. We really felt connected to nature and it's one that I highly recommend. This is just kind of goes to the wider picture though. Pay attention to the itinerary. All Alaskan cruises are not built the same. Some are shorter, some are longer, some go to completely different destinations. So just be on the lookout for that if you're thinking about going to Alaska. Now, if you have an addition to our list, let me know in the comments below. Love to hear from you. A special thank Thanks to our patrons for making all of our videos possible. And thanks to you for being a part of it with me. Until next time, have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.